They come by foot, by bus, and by other means. They follow a path well-worn by their ancestors, a path first traveled by Juan Diego. It was in 1531 when the 57-year-old Diego made his own pilgrimage of faith. On his way to morning mass, approaching Tepeyac Hill, music filled the air, and a beautiful young woman appeared to him. She declared herself the perfect and perpetual Virgin Mary. She instructed him to go to the local bishop and direct him to build a temple on that very spot. Moved by faith, Diego went to the bishop. The prelate was unmoved. After several meetings, the bishop demanded a sign from the lady. Again, she appeared to Juan Diego and told him to collect roses and bring them to her. The lady arranged the roses in his apron or tilma and sent him to the bishop. When Diego opened his tilma, the roses spilled to the floor, revealing the miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The bishop had his sign. Our Lady soon had her basilica. Even after 470 years, the popularity of Our Lady of Guadalupe continues. More than 14 million people visit the Basilica every year. That's double the number who visit Lourdes or Fatima. They come to witness the Virgin of Guadalupe, the Madonna, who appears part Aztec, part Jew, part European. Defying science, the tilma shows no signs of decay. The image is still crisp and clear. This is the original image that converted the Aztec people and drew them to Christ. Up close, there's a sadness in her swollen eyes. But beneath the sadness is a peace, the peace of the Christ child she carries in her womb. An Aztec symbol for the center of the universe is imprinted on her belly. This symbolism is not lost on her people. With their own sad eyes, they bring their burdens to her and go away with a bit of her peace. But like her children, the Virgin is not immune to attacks. This warped crucifix stands testament to a 1921 bomb that exploded just beneath the image. Though it mangled the cross and destroyed the altar, the people and their image were miraculously untouched. Today, the image is shielded by bulletproof glass. And around back, the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is kept behind this safe. Only the cardinal and the vicar here at the basilica can open it. The image can actually be turned around so it can be venerated, but only if they grant the permission. It is December 12th, the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The day is filled with native dances, songs, and all-night vigils evidence of the love the Mexican people have for La Virgen Morena. These people, I believe, live uh, their religion to such a greater degree than we do in the States, and they come here and they show it. And uh, this, this feast day, uh, the people that were here, I understand close to six million. It, it, it's incredible, and it's just something that until you actually see it, you can't believe it. If somebody comes back home and tells you they saw this or they saw that, you have to see it yourself. Any day of the week, a procession of penance can be seen at the Basilica. For them, she is more than an icon or an image to the old and the very young. The Guadalupe is our mother and we always have her. Our Lady of Guadalupe, they've taken her to their hearts, something the hope, Pope hopes will spread north of the border. Uh, there, there, we should talk a little bit about Our Lady of Guadalupe. We perhaps, in our earlier, uh, earlier in the week, we didn't have the time to really elaborate on who she is, what she means. This tilma is really an apron. It is made of a cactus fiber, I understand, that is highly sensitive to decay, and by right should have fallen to pieces about 20 years after the apparition. What Science has done all they can to, to disprove this. What have they found? They have found that it is amazing that this uh, type of material has not fallen apart, that has not corroded, that has not faded. And I, I recall uh, one of the uh, documentaries that is shown on EWTN, uh, one of the um, uh, scientists, uh, when they ask, what kind of thing is this? Is it a, is it a painting? Is it a uh, is it a, a mosaic? Is it a, a, a tapestry? 
And it's the only thing we can really say is that it's some kind of Polaroid picture from the 16th century. And, and by that they mean this whole image was somehow placed and thrust upon this material. Um, it's nothing short of, of a miraculous. And it's a, it's, a, it's a tremendous symbol of faith and a tremendous view of Our Lady. We're going to go to the video for a moment because now in our live feed we are getting the Holy Father getting into the Pope Mobile here. He's leaving the Nuncio's residence, flanked by the curial cardinals and members of the press, it seems, uh, as he steps into the Pope Mobile. This is live coverage of EWTN's, or rather, it's li EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to America. He's now in Mexico City on his way to a hospital where he'll visit the sick and frail elderly. We see the Holy Father stepping into the Pope Mobile at this point. The Vatican photographer always nearby. I always I also no, notice Shabim, who's the security guard of the Pope. He's been in that position for about 40 years. He's protected several popes. Uh, he's the white-haired gentleman in the just to the left of the middle of your screen there. He's about 80 years old. Uh, my producer Gary and I met him when we were in Rome and had opportunity to talk with him. He wouldn't talk, oh, he did talk on camera as a matter of fact, but uh, it's a rarity. He, he normally sort of shuns the press, but uh, he's always by the Pope's side. You always see him sort of with a, with a careful arm out to keep, um, to keep the Holy Father safe and travels the world with him. Must be an amazing position to be near the Holy, that close to the Holy Father constantly. And also to have all those experiences that he's seen, the tremendous love that the world has for our Holy Father. Mm -hmm. The Pope is now up on the step and actually getting into the Pope Mobile. So this motorcade should commence momentarily. And then in the next few minutes, we expect uh, he will be departing and on his way to the Lopez Mateo Hospital, where he'll visit the sick. Returning to Guadalupe, let's talk about that as we look at this aerial shot of the Nuncio's residence. Now, some have said they, they, they've tried to disprove the image of Guadalupe because of some painted additions to the, the cloth. Do you know anything about that? I don't know, except that, that, I, that the opening line of the documentary that is often played on EWTN is that for those who don't believe any explanation is insufficient for those who do believe any explanation is not necessary. Mm -hmm. And so you'll go and go and go. The fact is nobody can really explain mm -hmm. what this is and nobody can really continue to understand what kind of gift this is unless they have the eyes of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to see this. Father Roman, who I mentioned earlier, he is the uh, head of evangelization at the Basilica. As he took me around and as he was pointing to the, the image itself, he pointed out that sunburst, that gold sunburst we see around Our Lady. If you look very closely, it is peeling. He said the reason it's peeling is that gold was painted on, but the white sunburst beneath is what no one can explain. Exactly. So even these little painted uh, additions, Coming these off. pieces thought to, to improve the image, are flaking away while this mm. cactus weave material that should have decayed ages ago remains fully intact. It defies explanation. What it defies even more de uh, explanation is when they take um, uh, uh, almost a microscopic view of the eyes of Our Lady Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. You see Juan Diego, you see other people's faces in there. Now there's no yeah. way that could have been painted. Just, uh, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment, but I want to continue in this vein. The papal motorcade has left the Nuncio's residence. It is en route to the Lopez Mateos Hospital, where the Holy Father will have this encounter with the sick, and we'll bring it all to you live. For those of you just joining us, this is EWTN News live coverage of the papal visit to Mexico and America, the entire continent. He stressed that, so we should do the same. You were mentioning the eyes of Guadalupe. I, I, there was an interview I read once with an ophthalmologist who said the eyes are almost human. The, um, the, you know, they can you can literally see the reflection of what she's seeing. Exactly. And some have, have said, uh, once studying the, the tiny, tiny image that could not possibly have been painted right. in 1531, they've said it must have been the moment where the, the tumor was unveiled because you have Juan Diego Croesus, right. the bishop 
next to him, and then someone off in the distance. Several there. other people in the distance. Yeah. There's another situation too that may or may not be uh, well known, and that is the design around uh, the the dress of Lady Guadalupe, and these different points actually paint the sky in constellations. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at that now, it, it's going to be hard for me to understand how someone at the, in the 16th century would have such a view uh, of the constellations. Now we know that the Mayan culture n had a, had a more had a more accurate calendar mm -hmm. than even the Gregorian calendar, but the situation and the position of the stars did not coincide mm -hmm. with that moment. And even more re remarkable is that right over the womb of, of Mary is the, the constellation of the lion. And of course, the lion of Judah uh, it was the mm -hmm. prefigurement of the Messiah. Yes. Oh, it's just tremendous. There's also, they tell me, an Aztec, and we heard it in the piece, an Aztec symbol for the center of the universe yes. is, is over her belly and the Spaniards looked at this and went eh. then the Aztecs came along and yeah, instantly it exactly. registered there's the center of the universe exactly and 900 million yeah. Aztecs convert to Catholicism as a result yes and, and that this these these rays that come outside of her uh, are not from her she is blocking the Aztec God that required human sacrifice that took mm -hmm. away uh, the dignity and the rights of, of, of many 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 people and many millions uh, there's documentation of finding pyramids of uh, a uh, built of, of human skulls mm -hmm. as a result of the human mm -hmm. sacrifices. Yeah. So Ter she terrible practices. Oh and yeah. I, I'm going to run down a few of these uh, from some of the research that uh, Bjorn Lundberg has been doing great research for us yes, all week. Um, these inhuman sacrifices that they would offer included human sacrifice to atone for natural disaster, human hearts being ripped out alive exactly. during ceremonies. Uh, the toll could reach thousands in one day mm -hmm. on these solemn days of sacrifice. And the main gua god, Quetzalcoatl, um, was the feather stone serpent right. um, thousands were sacrificed to him every year I mean it's 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 astounding to think yeah. of this when 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 she appeared and this image became known the the the, the indigenous people recognized Quetzalcoatl's uh, uh, symbol of that sun but they realized that something was blocking it and mm. it was this woman arrayed in stars and this woman who in a humble fashion brought their attention and all also uh, invited them to wait with her for this birth that she was about to give to the universe, mm -hmm. the Our Lady of the New Advent. And as, as always happens, the church leaves uh, everyone else in history's dustbin. <laughs> who, who holds up pictures of Mayan gods? Uh, yeah. But Guadalupe is in every home oh and yes. has really touched the people. She is also, and it's something I, I mentioned a little earlier in our coverage, she is also, it seems to me, the icon of the new evangelization. The Pope made reference to that today. M my, my interpretation of that, and I, I'd like you to elaborate on this, is that we have a visual representation of what the faith is mm -hmm. and in an instant everyone is drawn to it is that what the Holy Father is calling us to be a visual representation of the faith to others I think in that regard it's I think it's right on the money there I think that that the Our Lady gives to us this great gift that we are asked to wait with as well she's about to give birth to the Savior of the world she asks us to wait with her and not with eyes looking up or looking in some kind of other position but in a humble fashion and, a hu and her hands folded in prayer her hands f her, her gaze her hands her whole posture is one f as a gesture for the church to wait to joyfully wait for the coming of the Messiah mm -hmm. the birth of Jesus and as we saw her wipe away the Aztec human sacrifice it is hoped and it is people pray to her to wipe away the sacrifice of abortion this terrible uh, blight that uh, is facing in, in every age, we seem to be facing the same monster, the same ugly monster. It's a different name each time, mm -hmm. but it's the same monster that, that, that threatens to eat the baby, that threatens to kill the baby, that dragon in Revelation that was waiting for the lady to give birth so that they, he could consume and, and, and eat the child, the child of Moses that was placed and saved because the other children were being wiped out, mm -hmm. the, 
the child of Jesus Christ himself in Bethlehem while the firstborn were slaughtered in the holy by innocence Herod. and mm -hmm. by Herod. It seems we go on and on and on. The enemy, I'm sure, Raymond, is the same, mm -hmm. but the remedy is the same. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. We are now looking at live pictures. This is the Holy Father's motorcade. He's on his way to a hospital where he'll meet the sick. And as we've seen throughout the day, the Pope is greeted by throngs of Mexicans. They're shaking papal flags and holding up cards of his image and the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, showing their fidelity, their solidarity, and their love for John Paul II, the globe-trotting Pope. It's always amazing. It should be amazing to all of our visitors, all of our viewers. The people still come out to see, to catch a small glimpse mm. of the Vicar of Christ on Earth. Rock stars come and go. No. Celebrity dies, flash in the pans, <laughs> a, a dime a dozen. That's right. And here we have John Paul II they come still out. drawing enormous crowds. And not only is he drawing them, hearts are being changed and I people are so. listening. I believe so. And the young people are coming. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're there in throngs. And uh, he loves them. And he shows that he loves them. And he brings them the message as Our Lady does. Don't be afraid to follow Christ. Don't be afraid to give your life. Don't be afraid to serve him. Don't be afraid of the nets. Be forward. Do not be afraid. Go forward in faith. Be courageous. Right, and he said that today at the Mass. Oh, Avoid yeah. the nets. Be courageous. Be generous That's right. to this invitation. That's right. I now want to wrap up the document that we have been summarizing and exploring all day, the Pope's apostolic exhortation, his strategy, his commission to you and I as we move into the third millennium. His mission in the chapter, the last chapter, the mission of the church in America, the new evangelization, he says, the lay faithful too, precisely as members of the church have the vocation and mission of proclaiming the gospel. They are prepared for this work by the sacraments of Christian initiation and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Would you elaborate at all? How does, and this is a question uh, I, I think we all have, how do we go to the Holy Spirit to receive these gifts? Once again, uh, he is referring to further on back, Gaudium et Spes, the Church in the Modern World, and Evangelii Nunciandi, the blueprint for evangelization after the Synod in 1975, almost now 25 years old. This is the church exists to evangelize. Evangelization is the raison d'etre, the reason for existence of the church. Mm -hmm. We exist to evangelize. We're baptized to evangelize. And so our reason to exist is to spread the message of the Savior. The woman at the well mm -hmm. could not help but tell, could not help but go to her neighbors and say, I've met the Messiah. I've met him. The, the travelers from the east, uh, the Magi, mm. going home a different route. All the people that met him were never the same. They were never, never, ever the same. And there again, the men from the very low to the very top exactly. of society, the all drawn to the same truth. The poor shepherds of Luke's gospel up until the monarchy in Matthew's gospel. Mm. All of all the levels of society, they were touched because Jesus Christ is for all people. The motorcade seems to be approaching the hospital now, certainly within distance, um, or very near. Again, the crowds are filling the roadways there on, on either side of the papal motorcade. Looks like they've stopped the crowds at a certain point mm -hmm. here for security purposes, which is why I imagine uh, we will see the Lopez Mateos Hospital very soon coming into view. This is EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to America, John Paul II, in Mexico City. Tomorrow he's got another full day. He has a private mass in the morning with the bishops and cardinals of the Americas. We are attempting to bring that mass to you. And later in the day, he'll have a meeting at the Azteca Stadium with all the generations of this century, a very interesting concept, and one that sort of ties together everything we've seen thus far. He will bring together the youth with the, with the elderly at one gathering and seek to enjoin them in this uh, crusade to bring Christianity, to bring Christ to the entire continent. It looks like we're approaching the hospital here where the view we have is of a corner and the motorcade is turning. But returning again to the mission of the church, 
we've established the new evangelization, and evangelization is the reason the church exists. Now, the Pope commissions the laity, and he has a line here directed specifically to the laity that I want to explore a little bit. I urgently desire to encourage all the members of God's people, particularly those living in America, where I first appealed for a commitment, new in its love, methods, and expression, to take up this project and to cooperate in carrying it out. In accepting this mission, everyone should keep in mind that the vital core of the new evangelization must be a clear and unequivocal proclamation of the person of Jesus Christ. That is the preaching of his name, his teaching, his life, his promises, and the kingdom which he has gained for us by his paschal mystery. Quite a mouthful there. He's actually referring to several things. Again, referring to Paul VI in his apostolic exhortation, the Evangelii Nunciandi, once again, referring to his first message to Selam in 1997, and of course, again, making reference to another document that is available in the EWTN uh, TN, uh, library, Christi Fidelis Laici, mm -hmm. the role of Christ faithful in the modern world, and mm -hmm. there he commissions the layperson. The Pope has arrived at Lopez Mateos Hospital, he has, um, looks like he's gotten in the emergency line here. They're rushing the, the uh, steps right up to the Pope Mobile. And I imagine momentarily he will step from the Pope Mobile and enter the hospital. Here comes Cardinal Rivera, who is driving with the Holy Father, and Bishop Stanislaw Zivic, the Pope's personal secretary. They're preparing the... Um, the stairway once more, and the Holy Father is on his feet. To be him there, standing next to the uh, Pope Mobile. The gentleman you see directly next to the Pope Mobile with the white hair. He, as I said, has been with the Holy Father for many years and has served at the Vatican as head of the police force for 40 years. A very rugged 80-year-old, I'd say. I don't hear any that sound. I think um, we're, we're, we're having some difficulties getting sound from the uh, from the location, but we are certainly getting a uh, a wonderful picture here. I wanted to remind our viewers that uh, the very first place that the Holy Father uh, visited after becoming Holy Father was a hospital. In fact, it was the day after, and I remember mm -hmm. um, someone had to remind him, "You have to bless the people." Uh, you have to bless the people before you leave, and and he, with with tremendous uh, loving care, blessed the people. But his first visit outside the Vatican walls as Holy Father was to a hospital. Isn't that something? Because as as Cardinal Votiwa, he promised either a bishop or someone's relative that after the cons after the uh, conclave, he would go and visit them in the hospital. Mm. And sure enough, he made good on his word. This time as John Paul II. His very first visit as Holy Father mm. to any place was a hospital. The Pope is now waving to the crowds, greeting him, standing at the uh, on the threshold of the Pope Mobile, about to step down and enter Mateo's Hospital here in Mexico City. And of course, we know that the Holy Father, sadly, has visited the hospital against his will as well several times. Yes. Uh, everything from stomach surgery, intestine surgery, um, flu, uh, broke a head, had a hip replacement. Um, the, the man has really been through suffering of intensity that uh, few could experience. And of course, the grave assassination attempt on his life in 1981. 81. May 13th, 1981, a day of true infamy. Mm. And of course, he, he went through that with such nobility and such faith. Uh, of course, one of the first visits upon leaving the hospital and, and during his recuperation was to visit his assassin. In January of the following year, in 1984, he went north in Italy to visit Ali Aka, mm -hmm. uh, the person accused and then later um, actually found guilty of the assassination attempt. And it was a very horrible day. Mm -hmm. um, my class was there in, in the square and in St. Peter's, and um, 
yeah, a day you don't want to relive. Mm. Imagine for those watching, I can't imagine for himself. Mm. But um, through the intercession of Our Lady, um, he pulled through. I remember listening on the radio that night from the North American College. The Holy Father uh, sent a message uh, that night uh, from the hospital, and he asked the people for his prayers, and then he said in Italian, I forgive the brother who tried to kill me. Mm. And we all just burst into tears. That was the first thing he said. He was dying. And he said, Perdono al fratello che ha mocosato morte. I, I forgive the mm. brother who tried to kill me. And he still bears the scars of that assassination attempt. Of course, many of the, the physical problems, the, the cane the Holy Father uses. Now, this, this was and remains in many ways a very active man. He was skiing and hiking and jumping about. <laughs> and though it has slowed him down a bit, it has certainly not stopped him. And I must say, those who have written the early obituaries for John Paul II are going to have to do a major retraction job <laughs> because this man has really proven, at least to these eyes, his strength, his vitality, and his willingness to go on in the face of frailty. And I'll tell you, he doesn't look so frail on this visit. Mm -hmm. He is now blessing uh, sisters. It looks like missionaries of charity. Yes, yes it's they are. Uh, some missionaries of charity gathered uh, in the doorway of the hospital. He's touching the heads of each one of them. Of course, we. And of course, we heard earlier today in his uh, during his homily. I believe he said a missionary of charity was killed in Sierra Leone. We've yet to confirm that. I wasn't sure if he said a sister of charity or a missionary of charity. But he is certainly reaching out to Mother Teresa's order, another figure near and dear to our hearts. He continues to individually touch each missionary of charity upon there. I'm wondering if as he sees those missionary sisters, is he reminded of his good friend Mother Teresa of Calcutta mm. and how sad he was, but how hopeful his words were. What a tremendous light in this century. Mm. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Pope now touching the heads of children and making his way into the hospital. Mm. Affectionately rubbing the head of a small child. And he continues moving through. I always love to see him in Cuba. He went to a, to a hospital. Sim it, it is a visit similar to this. There are There are markers to a papal visit that we see time and time again. An encounter with the youth, mm -hmm. an encounter with the sick, usually an encounter with what the Pope calls a world of culture. And by the way, that is the next uh, point I want to make in the mission of the Church in this apostolic exhortation. He calls us to evangelize the culture. But we'll get back to that in a moment. The other thing we always see is a huge papal mass. And of course, the greeting and meeting with the local officials, where he seeks to sanctify the political and the governing order. The Pope is practically reaching over a, a barricade here to to touch, I, it look, I don't know if it's a wheel wheelchair uh, bound child. I believe it's a child in a wheelchair. He was reaching down to uh, right over the barricade to um, touch and bless. And as you said earlier, there's nothing like having the Holy Father look you square in the eye. Mm. He's making each of those people feel as if they're the only person in the world mm -hmm. giving special attention and look what he's doing just a simple visit a simple touch a simple blessing what a great example to all of us mm -hmm. to visit the nursing homes in our parishes yes the um, the the feed uh, unfortunately we we have no sound from the from the feed but we're very appreciative we have the pictures but uh, we have no sound but i see him from time to time moving his lips i imagine he's making a little joke or uh, a little witticism. I remember the first time um, the first time I saw him, uh, my wife was standing next to me and he said, you know, what is your name? And she said, Rebecca. And he turned around and kept walking and then he turned around, Rebecca, like the Old Testament. <laughs> you know, and she shook his cane and uh, he, he's a delight. He's always uh, witty, always has a, a, a kind word and uh, Amazing to, to have that encounter with him. He's now kissing a, a child, and the mother kissing his hand. This is something that I, I failed to point out earlier during the Mass, and, and we discussed this a little bit. We didn't want to interrupt the, uh, the chorus, the beautiful chorus at the Mass earlier, but 
as communion was going on, I was drawn to the fact that everyone who received communion took the communion in their mouth, and then as the Holy Father withdrew his hand, they reached over and kissed the outside of his hand. Everyone who received communion, and I thought this was a lovely gesture that I've never seen before. Well, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, Mediterranean, Hispanic, uh, cultural uh, practice uh, to kiss the hand that brings you the Lord Jesus, mm. uh, to kiss the hand of someone who is Well, this is not a practice reserved to the Pope. I don't, I don't think so. I, mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, I working among Hispanics, as I am an Hispanic priest, uh, many times uh, they'll kiss the hand of the priest as well. Mm -hmm. There's a great uh, custom uh, of the newly ordained. Once the, the hands of the newly ordained are, are extended after the blessing, that they're kissed because they've just been anointed, freshly anointed. Mm. They bring, blessed are the feet who bring the good news. And, and this is really, I think, key to what um, to what the Pope is calling us all to in the new evangelization, he said he, he said earlier at the mass today, keep your culture intact, bring that culture. It is through that culture that John Paul II sees this new evangelization taking root and transforming lives. Uh, I, I'll call your attention back to this document, and I've been uh, parking the document because it really is the center of this visit, and I don't want any of us to lose sight of that. And it is, all of these visits are merely facets of this central document that the Holy Father has crafted. In it, he says, evangelization of culture is so important. My predecessor, Paul VI, widely remarked that the split between the gospel and culture is undoubtedly the drama of our time. Hence, the Synod Fathers rightly felt the new evangelization calls for a clearly conceived, serious, and well-organized effort to evangelize culture. The gift of his spirit and his love are meant for each and every people and culture in order to bring them all into unity after the example of the perfect unity existing in the triune God. It is the only, he, he says, the paschal mystery of Christ is the only valid point of reference for all humanity and all culture on its pilgrimage to the search for authentic unity and true peace. And we hear some music now coming from the site of this visit, the Lopez Mateos Hospital. There's the Holy Father greeting one of his cardinals and now reaching out to children and sick, sick people there assembled. He's touching each of them and giving each a blessing on the head. After he blesses, they all kiss his hand, you'll notice again. Even from their wheelchairs, they're reaching up and touching the Holy Father. Uh, holding a young toddler by the cheek, giving him a kiss. We're hearing some, hearing some uh, a, a little um, interference from one of our other feeds, but uh, but we will we will correct that difficulty. The sister there, do you recognize that order? I don't, but I, what I'm looking at is the faces of the parents mm -hmm. when the Holy Father picks up their children. It's just incredible. Yeah. Oh, oh so sister beautiful. reaching over and kissing his hand. They just they just burst out with such happiness. Look at the child. Keep re the ch there's a little boy that keeps reaching out there and he grabbing is. There he is. his, his um, habit there. Just lovely. Have you noticed how they've interspersed the elderly with the different ages, the different mm -hmm. types of infirmity, the children? And we're seeing again what we've seen all along. And I really believe in his wisdom. John Paul II has crafted these appearances and these events these encounters to underscore his entire mission here. Mm -hmm. This new evangelization, it will take the mm -hmm. old, the young, the infirm, the healthy, the artistic, the worker, everyone in concert. And he's reaching out to every level of this society. Indeed he is. is. Here again we hear the music from, uh, from the hospital here, the Lopez Mateos Hospital. This is EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to America. Music from 
Yes, and uh, there, here we see a, um, a priest holding, a, it looks like a priest holding a child, a sick child with Down syndrome or something there. Is the uh. I, I can't tell, we're getting a, a, an angle from behind the Holy Father, and he's blocking the child. But again, this great sensitivity he has, and solidarity with those who are suffering. Great solidarity. Seems to me a couple of those uh, of the clergy are, are being very moved by this. I can't imagine what it would be like to stand next to him and see these wonderful faces and being touched by his holiness and the vicar of Christ on earth and just to be overwhelmed with this touch of love and to be strengthened and fortified in this ministry of suffering. He continues down the line here, greeting the sick, the frail, the weak. Here's a man in a, in a wheelchair with the papal crest on his jacket, and an elderly lady next to him, all waiting for a touch and a moment with Pope John Paul II. I love how the staff is just behind their patients. They too are, are um, awaiting the Pope's touch in a moment with him. Can't tell, this looks like it might be outside, possibly not. No, it's a hallway, it's a hallway. I, I, the marble uh, threw me. There was marble on the floor there. And I, uh, the way the light was hitting it, it appeared it was outside, but it is indeed indoors. He's very slowly making his way forward. And there is an address planned um, by the Holy Father, which we have the, um, we have an official text of. Uh, as I said, we are still experiencing some difficulty with the uh, audio portion of our feed. But fear not, the words of the Pope will reach you one way or other. And uh, there we see the mass ceremonies, Bishop Marini. Uh, Next, standing next to the Pope in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. He comes before the Pope to all of the places the Pope visits in the world. Marini appears uh, early and decides where, how things will be organized, sets the timetable, explores the venue, and finalizes all the details that make these masses seem so effortless as they unfold before us and come into your homes. So he is really a central part and a key player uh, in the Pope's mission. When the Pope is about to speak here, he's making the sign of the cross. The Lord be with you and also with you. Miraculously, we have audio, and here is the Holy Father addressing this gathering of the sick. Santissimo Padre. Most Holy Father. La presencia de vuestra santidad the en presence este lugar. of your holiness in this place is a clear manifestation people. of God's love for his Cuando sick Jesus people. When Jesus announced la buena nueva del reino the good news of the kingdom y a los enfermos, and cured the sick, una fuerza curativa salía de él. one strong sense of cure came from his hands. Hace presente hoy this strong presence of Jesus has come today to this hospital en el misterio and pastoral has, de Cristo, has made a profound difference in the meaning of the presence dolor, of Jesus Christ here, donde el dolor del unido al de Cristo, especially se hace as we understand the suffering of man. Padre, Most Holy Father, Cuando recibe el amor de nuestros hermanos, when we receive the love of these sick brothers and sisters, reciba el cariño please receive de todos los enfermos de all America, of the love of the sick of this city and of salud, this country, who ask you for your prayers and for your blessing that they may be healed and to receive the holy divine love. Episcopal de la pastoral de la salud, y los I thank de all of those here who are presently involved, especially those responsible for the pastoral care of the sick and for all those here at Santísimo this hospital. Padre, bienvenido Holy a Father, este centro welcome donde to this se center el amor where the de love Dios. of God, the tender love of God is felt and experienced. 
God bless you. The Cardinal welcoming the Holy Father to the hospital. He just knelt, kissed the Holy Father's ring. And now I imagine Pope John Paul II will address this gathering. God our Father, through sent his son, so that you may cover these sufferings and to cover these sufferings and pains you wish to take this pain from us we ask you with these sick brothers and sisters give them patience and strength animate their hope that with your blessing they may come to overcome their suffering and sickness and with your help we come to a point where they can announce your good news we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen it's a blessing of the sick from the book of blessings the Lord God Father has for you we ask together in the prayer that your son Jesus Christ gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God the Father bless you. May the Lord, his Son, give you strength. May the Holy Spirit Amen. illumine you. And up to all of you who are here present. May God bless each and every one of you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the Pope will address this gathering of the sick, the frail elderly, young people who are dealing with various maladies. The first, it looks like we're we have just heard the Holy Father give you and all of us this great message. And we thank you, Holy Father, and we thank him together. Habla. The Pope now walking away, going down the uh, aisle again, greeting the sick. It appears as if the Holy Father did not um, did not deliver his address, the full address, to um, to the sick people gathered here. Perhaps we, we will go through the document and highlight portions for you, or at least pull out key ideas. I'd like to mention too, also, uh, Raymond, to our listeners and our viewers, that the, the uh, apart from Cardinal Rivera, the other bishop who who came forward and yes. you presented him, is that must be Bishop Jose Lizarre Estrada, yes. the auxiliary of Monterrey and the president of the Bishop's Commission on Healthcare. Uh -huh. The Pope now making his way out of the, uh, the hospital here. Or so it would appear. This is EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to Mexico City. He is now at the Lopez Mateos Hospital in Mexico City visiting the sick. We'll let you enjoy some of the native music now.
music from the Lopez Mateos Hospital in Mexico City where the Holy Father is continuing his encounter with the sick. He just delivered a blessing of the sick on all of those gathered. It's a very emotional gathering, we should tell you. Uh, people are, are uh, weeping as the Holy Father touches them and comes near them. He's reaching out, of course, to those children who um, are suffering from retardation, uh, elderly people who have various maladies. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a scene of great hope and a scene of great sadness, I think, is the best way to explain what we're seeing here. Great we, were, we, were we were told that he um, did hold and bless at least two or three children who uh, are inflicted with pediatric AIDS. Mm -hmm. Although we weren't sure exactly which ones they were, right. we knew that information is correct and has been substantiated by those covering the papal visit to the hospital in Spanish. Mm -hmm. A lot of little children here with their parents. A little boy just ducked under the rope trying to get <laughs> to the Holy Father. <laughs> Barriers will not stop the young. And I don't think he'd have it any other way. I don't believe so either. I will, um, in light of the fact that I believe the Holy Father has, uh, for whatever reason, he will not present um, his prepared statement here. I will excerpt portions of it, um, ideas rather than exact wording. Uh, he, he says, in essence, that he asks the people who are sick in body or mind to associate themselves with Christ's sufferings and that in faith they might understand the purpose of human suffering. I'm not saying not to drive the point home too much, but perhaps we should remind of you what exactly is the purpose of human suffering in the eyes of the church as, as, as articulated by this Pope. First of all, uh, suffering in the light of the gospel is a participation and a share in the paschal mystery, that is, the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The church was born in the mystery of the redemption of the cross in Christ, and this church that was born in this mystery of suffering is obliged to engage the entire church in a particular way in this very same path of suffering. And then, in this encounter, as the Pope writes, constitutes the path of the church and one of the most important ones. That is, suffering entails an entrance into the mystery of Jesus' life itself. Mm -hmm. Without the cross, Raymond, there will be no paradise. Mm -hmm. And so, that's where it comes. So for a moment here, we will let you enjoy as those who have come here to be healed, to be encouraged, and to show their love for this Pope. As they enjoy this music, we hope you will too, the serenade of the Holy Father as he departs the hospital. And once again, this is EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to the sick and dying in Mexico City. We are seeing some moving images for those of you listening oh. in via shortwave AM, FM radio. Words really can't convey. It would take me a few weeks to write, uh, construct a paragraph to explain what I'm seeing here. But the brows are, are wrinkled with sadness and hope 
he's wiping tears mm -hmm. from the assembled. There's a gentleman there he just blessed, and, and the Pope lovingly stroked the tears away, spending a moment with him. There are two children here with images of Our Lady of Guadalupe in their wheelchairs, and they're sort of holding them up, I imagine, hoping the Pope will bless them. As he moves through the reaction of these people, the emotional outpouring that you see is something that we, uh, I must tell you, I'm unaccustomed to seeing in quite this fashion. There are a few people who have this effect on other human beings. <coughs> as when you see the Pope move through a crowd and, and connect one-on-one -on -one with, with people, nothing like it. That we had 10 or 15 of him. <laughs> I, I, I have my problems with cloning, but watching the Pope, <laughs> I wish I could take one or two of them and spread them around. But the, what's remarkable, Raymond, is the fact that this man himself is in pain. Yeah. And through his pain, he's touching others. That's just There's a gentleman here oh. just crying uncontrollably, really. This is the, the gentleman I mentioned earlier that the Pope brushed his tears away. Now, it's been a good minute or two after the Pope has moved away, this man is still caught in that moment and scarred by that moment. <laughs> in a beautiful way. In a beautiful way. In a beautiful way. Now the Pope is now, uh, perhaps I am mistaken, it looks as if the Holy Father will, may indeed, give his um, address to this group. He's now getting on an elevator. When I saw him make the loop in that in the room we were watching, it appeared as if he was going to exit and head back to the Pope Mobile. Now he, Cardinal Rivera, and his entourage, Bishop Zivich, are, are in an elevator. Where they are going, I can't quite tell, but uh, perhaps he's going up to a ward or a separate uh, part of the hospital to greet those who are bedridden. We shall see in a moment. It's possible that but he is, is going... this is EWTN's live coverage of the papal visit to Mexico. I'm so glad you've decided to join us. This is a, an emotional moment, a moving moment, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you along. I'm joined by Monsignor Michael Eras from Corpus Christi, and I, I, it, it's hard to express what <laughs> oh, those is. pictures do to you. They, they, they certainly do move you, though. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I think he's going into a pediatric ward, actually, yes. but to see the parents of these children just be, oh, it is just remarkable. I don't want to interrupt you, Monsignor, but it looks like the Holy Father has now emerged from the uh, elevator. The elevator elevator and uh, there he is shaking the hands of, uh, of, of people on another ward here. <laughs> 